Explorer history is made again. LaSalle runner Morgan Zeckley made quite the improvement from her last performance at the NCAA Championships, finishing in the top 50. Hello, I'm Anna Gomez. And I'm Brendan Rigney. Women's basketball finally gets their first victory of the season with a win over Howard. You're watching LaSalle TV's Home for Explorer Athletics Sportsline. Welcome to Sportsline. Anna and Brendan here on desk. Great show for you. Isaac Perry will be here to report the latest exploring headlines. And later, fellow Sportsline producer and friend of mine and Anna's, Jake Smolinski, will be joining us for his picks of the week. But first, let's take a look at what went down this past week for our athletes. The men's cross country team capped off their season at the IC4A Championships at Van Cortland Park. The Explorers had three runners finish in the top 20. Coming in sixth place, LaSalle's top finisher, junior Bradley Hewer, ran the five-mile course with a time of 25 minutes and 38.5 seconds. Next to cross the finish line for the Explorers, junior Steven Lewandowski had a time of 25 minutes and 54.4 seconds, enough for 16th place. And last for the Explorers, but certainly not the least, senior Ian Barnhill came in 18th place with a time of 25 minutes and 57 seconds. Due to those three key players and all of the other hardworking Explorers, LaSalle took fourth place and finished with 90 team points. And while the women's cross country season may be over, sophomore phenom Morgan Zeckley advanced to the NCAA cross country championship held in Louisville, Kentucky on Saturday the 21st. Zeckley improved upon her 169th place finish from last year, making the big leap to 45th place out of a 254 runner field. She finished with a time of 20 minutes and 29 seconds, only 2.1 seconds shy of a place in the top 40. Zeckley finished third out of the runners from the Mid-Atlantic region, preceded by Penn State's Tessa Barrett and Temple's Blanca Hernandez. Zeckley's finish at the championship is the best finish by any explorer in program history. Prior to the Thanksgiving holiday, the women's swimming and diving team competed at the Bucknell Invitational beginning on Friday, November 20th and lasting until Sunday the 22nd. On the final day of the meet, LaSalle junior Ava Marie Osteris broke the school's 200-yard butterfly record with a time of 203.47 seconds. That is really fast. The, ex the record was previously held and set by Marlana Root in 2002. Osteris' time was the fastest time in the B finals of the Invitational, and it earned the Explorers 20 points. As a team, the Explorers finished seventh with a combined total of 446 points. Other performers were junior Kate Hay, who finished in 19th place in the 200-yard freestyle final, thanks to a time of 52.10 seconds. The LaSalle relay team of freshman Olivia, Olivia DeStefano, Hay, Osteris, and sophomore Emma Smith swam in 3 minutes, 29.16 seconds for an 8th place finish in the 400-yard freestyle relay. And the men's, men's swimming and diving team also traveled to Lewisburg, PA, for the Bucknell Invitational. The Explorers finished 5th out of ninth in the competition with a final score of 687.5 points. LaSalle performed well in the invite, earning 40 points alone from a 5th place finish in the 400-yard freestyle relay on the final day of the invitation. On that same day, senior Fabian Bergman and junior Jerry Gravel reached the 200-yard backstroke A Finals. Both Explorers sported impressive performances in this event, with Bergman finishing in fourth place and Gravel not far behind, hitting the wall in the seventh. And women's basketball extended their losing streak, or yeah, extended their losing streak to three games in the Gola on the 21st, losing to Robert Morris. Let's see how things went down. Women's basketball fell in their second home game of the season to Robert Morris on November 21st in a Saturday night matchup. The Colonials took an early lead in the first quarter, leading 14-9. to That wavered in the second when crucial plays by Ashanti Freeland and Amy Griffin only allowed Robert Morris to tack on three points on their lead. The Colonials began a revolution in the first minutes of the second, going on a 19-8 run. With 11 different Colonial scorers, LaSalle's defense struggled to hold them, and it was clear our offense was just not up to par. 
LaSalle quietly continued to fall into the end of the clock in their third loss of the season, 45-76. to LaSalle was back in action on Wednesday the 25th to start a six-game road trip. First stop, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, home of the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. The Explorers fell 61-53 to to continue a four-game losing streak, but LaSalle made the fourth quarter an exciting one. But, leading 45-43 to to start the quarter, the Demon Deacons used an 8-2 to run to expand the lead and put the game out of reach for LaSalle. The Explorers followed this with back-to-back -back losses in the Miami Thanksgiving Classic, first to Wisconsin-Milwaukee, 69-53 to on November 28th. The following day, the Blue and Gold dropped their game against Miami, 86-58. to And as if to answer the rocky start to their season, the Explorers bounced back in a dramatic fashion on December 2nd with a slim 71-68 to win over UMBC. After remaining neck and neck for much of the game with the Retrievers, Explorer Ebony Wells hit two free throws to tie the game at 66 with less than two minutes to play. Carrying that momentum, Jasmine Alston tallied her fourth steal of the game and nailed two more free throws to give LaSalle the edge. Laston Alston repeated this only seconds later, notching steal number five and adding two more free throws, despite Howard layup uh, despite a Howard layup to cut the lead to 70 to 68 with 24 seconds left, the blue and gold held on and added one more free throw thanks to Micaiah Owens. Uh, and Micaiah Owens, she finished with a game high of 21 points and six rebounds, and the Explorers shot 19 for 24 from the free throw line. Right before Thanksgiving, men's basketball had two games that left the fans with mixed results. On Monday, November 23rd, the Explorers hosted Lafayette in a non-conference matchup. Jordan Price immediately came out shooting with 14 of the first 21 points of the game. Despite the Leopards making a comeback, a comeback within two at the half, Price finished with 33 points on the game, with Tony Washington stepping in as well to lead the Explorers to the victory. The final score was 83-75, bringing their record to 3-0. But all things do come to an end as the Explorers dropped their first game of the season versus Penn on Wednesday, November 25th. Considering that Penn had not lost, had not beaten LaSalle since 2004, this looked like it would be an easy sweep for the Explorers. However, Penn's defense managed to contain Price, forcing Cleon Roberts to step up by scoring 20 on the night. Johnny Schuler was also frozen from beyond the arc, but managed to grab a double-double. The Explorers failed to stop Penn's Darian Nelson Henry, who scored 31 points while also pulling down 14 rebounds to the, in the 80 to 80, 80 to 64 upset. The Explorers then traveled to Rowan in honor of the 20th anniversary of Coach G's national championship with the Profs. Instead of forcing the D3 school to travel to LaSalle, the Explorers were classy and went to them. The last time this happened in college basketball was about 12 years ago. It was an incredible gesture of respect, and the Explorers didn't take it lightly. Even with a rough start on both sides of the ball, the Explorers cruised to an easy 81-51 win led by Price, Rohan Brown, and Amar Stukes. And uh, women's, or uh, men's basketball, they versed Hofstra on the second, that's Wednesday. Uh, let's take a look at the highlights here. Jordan Price, the obvious headliner of this game, he had a game high, career high, of 35 points. Uh, it's the most of any explorer since 2005 with Stephen Smith. Um, but we didn't expect it to go that well. Uh, yeah, Jordan Price right there. We really didn't expect it to go this well. Robert, um, not Robert Mars, Hofstra really, dominated the first half uh, until the second half you see right here we really woke up this team it was a completely different team at this point uh, look at look just Jordan Price coming from behind I <laughs> and then uh, but at the end here this is when it really started to happen and they started to really get desperate sorry I'm looking at my notes a little bit there's a Cleon Roberts score. You can see they celebrate it because this is when they really started to clinch. 77 to 78, a minute left in the entire game, littered with fouls. You got Jordan Price just getting desperate, trying to throw a three-pointer. We get possession back. Nothing. We can't make it happen. Uh, and you look at this. Just look at this, what happens here. I don't know. I don't know what happens here. Everyone just goes down. It's a mess. I, no one knows what happened. And this is with 40 seconds left in the game. Yeah, just knocking it out. We are getting very, very desperate. We have 10 seconds left. Cleon Roberts 
trying to get the foul. He, he, get, he gets the free throw for the foul. He just, he panics. Uh, that's, that's it. We have, we're down two points, and they, he just doesn't make it. Uh, Price, again, is getting desperate here. Uh, but it was a real upset. A really nice comeback, though. Um, unfortunately, we just could not get it. It was the last seconds of the game. I actually was uh, in the collegiate office with uh, STP's Tommy Mack uh, watching this online, and we just, first we felt really desperate, but then right there, right when they started pulling back, I, th I really thought we were going to be able to pull it out, but, you know, <sighs> really close, but now we're on 4-2 and two on the season, so men's basketball going to have to pick it up for the next game. But uh, no weekly awards again this week. Uh, I'd like to see some love for Jordan Price by the A-10. But anyway, joining us now for headline exploration, Mr. Isaac Perry. Hey. Isaac, how are you doing, sir? Yeah, I'm doing better every day. How about you guys? This is, guys, it's an honor to be on the show. Definitely, I love both of you guys. Um, obviously, obviously, let's get to it. LaSalle, LaSalle men's basketball is already preparing for the future. Uh, with high school player C.N. Sullivan already signing a national letter of intent to play for the Explorers. The seven foot one big man is from Cary, Ireland, but he spent his fall season in Rhode Island at St. Andrews Prep High School. So, Isaac, tell me, you, you've done a bit of research on this young guy. Uh, what, do you, what do you think? Is this a good pickup for, for Coach G and the boys for next season? Or Yes, absolutely. Um, actually, for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, you don't find a lot of seven footers um, on period. I think this guy has a has a very very bright future, he's seven foot one. My main thing is that as long as he can, he can put the pounds on, he, he can have a very good future. Well, let's hope he uh, has quite the success just like Steve Zach and Jarrell right before him. Well, Isaac, thanks for coming on, um, no but it's time for our first break, but please don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll have game previews and the marquee matchup. Stay tuned. cause of death for young children. Simple safety steps are the best way to prevent these tragedies. Make sure kids learn how to swim. Always watch them in and around water. Properly fence all pools and stay away from drains. Consider the steps you take, then add a few more. Because you never know which pool safety step will save a life until it does. Simple steps save lives. To learn some new ones, visit PoolSafely.gov. Today, Eric Almarola behind the wheel in that 43 car. We all have a role to play here at Richard Petty Motorsports. We respect each other, work hard, and that helped us get the big win in Daytona. My partners in the U.S. Air Force also know that it takes a team to make each mission a success. Your coworkers, family, and friends are your team. Treat them with respect and together you can accomplish great things. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Welcome back. There is plenty of LaSalle sports action in this upcoming week, so let's highlight the games ahead. Men's basketball has only had one game, or will only have one game between now and the next episode. The Explorers will remain home in the Gola to host rival Drexel on Saturday, December 5th. Women's basketball will travel to Maryland on December 6th to face UMBC. The Blue and Gold are coming off their win over Hofstra and sit at 1-6 on the season. And some of the men's and women's swimming and diving teams will continue to compete at the Winter National Championships until December 5th in Washington State. Meanwhile, the remaining uh, swimmers will continue their own event in Ithaca, New York. After this, LaSalle Swimming and Diving will, will enjoy winter break before returning to action in late January. Now, let's take a look at this week's marquee matchup. Naya Malik gives her take on the Swimming and Diving team's trek to Ithaca. I'm Malik, and this is Marquee Matchup. This week, I am giving you an overview of the LaSalle men's swimming team's next invitational at Ithaca College. The event will last from Friday, December 4th until Sunday, December 6th. Currently, the team is off to a great start for the season with a record of two wins and only one loss. They achieved these wins early on in the season when they faced Villanova and Drexel. Later, George Mason edged them out and LaSalle took its first loss of the season. In their first match against Villanova, Jakub Bartovic won two individual events and was a part of two separate relay team wins. 
The sophomore won his 200-yard freestyle race by finishing with a time of 1 minute 44.68 seconds. He then beat out freshman explorer Alexander Nikolic in the 500-yard freestyle with a time of 4 minutes 47 seconds to the freshman's 4 minutes 51. In the second match against Drexel, senior Johan Roth had a great match ending with two first place wins and one second place finish. In their third match against George Mason, Jakob Bartovic made an impact again when he came in second place in the 200-yard butterfly event. Roth and sophomore Davici Mia Denovic finished second and third for the 200-yard breaststroke event. The Explorers have a great potential to beat out Ithaca, though. The Bombers currently have a great water level season as they have won three matches and only lost three. But the Explorers will be chasing the Bombers' tails as athletes like Addison Herbert, who last swam in the 200-yard freestyle in 1 minute 14 seconds, leaving Bartovic's best time in the 30-second deficit. Aiden Hartswick for the Bombers may also be someone the Blue and Gold should definitely look out for as he is a very strong competitor who is a two-time all-conference champion for the Empire 8. He finished out the 100-yard breaststroke with less than half a second to beat in 101.04 versus Cortland. For the Explorers, Fabian Bergman will be one key swimmer in the meet upcoming as he leads the team by finishing in the top five of their last invitational in the 200-yard brushstroke, a finals in a fourth place where he touched in one minute 48 seconds, along with senior Johan Roth, who also finished in fourth place, earning 26 points for the team in the 200-yard brushstroke after placing fifth overall at Bucknell. The Explorers do have a fighting chance at winning, and they definitely could win this meet. They need to have great starts. With competitors like Aiden Hartswick, Ithaca knows they perform well under pressure. So these starts are going to be very, very crucial. Additionally, if they can capitalize on these great starts, just their finishes are just as important. If they can take advantage of what LaSalle gains early in their events, they'll be able to finish it out strong. This is Naam Malik reporting from LaSalle TV, and don't forget to tune in to the men's swimming team. Chris Malinsky will give you his pick, picks of the week. We'll be right back. Air Force has a proud history of leading our nation in embracing diversity. We've been reaching new heights for years by understanding it's our individual experiences which make us strong. You can share in this success by seeking opportunities to learn and grow as a member of a diverse team. We are the world's greatest Air Force, not because of what we do, but who we are. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. A promise was made. A promise that hit the beaches of Normandy. A vow that captured Iwo Jima. A contract that weathered Tet. A pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq. An IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. DAV fights to keep that promise so all veterans and their families get the benefits and support they earn. For help, visit DAV.org que usted siente hasta cuando sucede. La mayoría de las personas pierden su visión a causa de enfermedades como la degeneración macular y el glaucoma, no en el nacimiento. El glaucoma es la principal causa de ceguera entre los hispanos y los afroamericanos en los Estados Unidos. 11 millones de personas en los Estados Unidos tienen degeneración macular, así que muchos trastornos oculares pueden tratarse si se detectan a tiempo. Haga un plan hoy para que le examinen sus ojos. Visita brightfocus.org para aprender más. My name is Carly, I'm 15 years old and I am a heart recipient. I got my first heart transplant when I was one and a half years old. I got my second heart when I was 13. When I get my driver's license, of course I'm gonna say yes to be an organ donor. I've been saved twice, so who says I can't save somebody else? <laughs> this gift of life was made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Uh, 
welcome back here on desk with us, Jake Smolinski. Uh, I think you might know him. I don't, I don't know if you do. Um, Jake, it's time for Picks of the Week. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Picks I, of the I, Week. It's, so It's my absolute favorite segment uh, um, here on LaSalle TV. Um, I feel very blessed that you guys keep on continuing. Let, just let me just roam free on this. I feel like a, just a kind of like a... Uh, Sheehan, uh, Sheehan uh, what, Sullivan, the new, uh, this new prospect. I feel like I'm just prancing through like an Irish field. Uh, yeah, he's actually <laughs> seven one. That, that, if he gets here, he'll he'll do some damage yeah. for, for us. Not okay. for, you know, but. So anyway, let's just nix that. All right, so I'm gonna go into my first pick of the week, and you know what that is going to be? Men's basketball versus Drexel. Of course, it is. Of course it is. Uh, And for that one, I'm gonna call for a win. Uh, after that little bit of an upset against, or well, versus Penn. I feel that Coach G is really going to be just pressing the, the significance of like these big five matchups and everything. Um, uh, and I mean, Drexel actually like is actually City Six, right? Like, Correct. Yes. Yeah. And I know Drexel right now. I was reading an article about this uh, just yesterday. Drexel is currently ranked at the bottom of the City Six. Um, mm. So <laughs> I'm pretty excited. I'm hoping that Jordan Price can come out strong. Um, I was really uh, enthused by his uh, performance against Hofstra, and I know Gomez, you were there on the side, like. It was actually like pretty solid to see someone not like Tyrone Garland just not like, give like to not give up, <laughs> which was kind of refreshing. Any take on that? Um, well, first going back to you mentioned uh, the upset against Penn, uh, I can 100% understand why Coach G would want to maybe try and you know uh, tighten the bolts on the team <laughs> because LaSalle gave up uh, I think what 52 points in that yeah. second half against Penn. That is abysmal, and especially since. Um, Outside of Jordan Price, the pride of our team was our defense. We were a defensive-minded team uh, for the most part. So to have something like that happen against a team like Penn, which it, Penn, is, Penn is good. They're about the same level that we are. Um, but th <laughs> you, you don't let 52 points up in yeah. a college basketball game in one half. That just, it just doesn't happen. It's too much. And though that brings me then to, this is going to be a bit depressing now, uh, pick number two, loss for women's basketball against UMBC. Um, I am not completely sold right now on the women's basketball team. Everything feels very, very discombobulated. Makaya Owens, she's putting up incredible points. Um, she is one of the best utility players that our entire like team has seen in like the past like ten years. Um, and just the fact that she got to grow up playing with like Alicia Cropper and everything, um, she's definitely kind of stepped up into that leading role. But for some reason, just something's not mixing, and we're seeing this like that six-game slide to start off the season. You're breaking my heart, women's basketball. Uh, yeah, actually, they. They were uh, 500 last year. They they did pretty well. I thought that they would carry that momentum over, but you got to remember they, they lost Alicia Cropper, who was yep. a big part of that team last year. Um, so just like we were worried about men's basketball losing losing uh, Jarrell Wright and Steve Zach, and a couple years ago when we lost Ramon Galloway on the men's team, that yep. that put us in a, a bit of a rut. I think we're experiencing a very similar situation here for the women's basketball team of LaSalle. Yep. Um, yep. But you know, I, I would agree that I don't I don't see them picking up this win against UMBC. So okay, so that brings me to my last pick. I'm calling for a top ten finish for Bergman in the Winter Nationals. Uh, or I think yep, yeah, yep. Swimming and diving, Winter National. Um, Bergman has been consistently just performing. What do you think about this, Gomez? Uh, we've seen how he's been picking up these wins or it, the, just top finishes in the 200 yard backstroke. Do you think that he has what it takes to kind of just go top ten in this? I'm hoping. He, he's, been, he's been really, really great under pressure this season. So I'd like to see that top 10 finish. I think he has it in him. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's great when you can see, like, especially because he's, I believe, a sophomore, too. And Bergman has a ton of potential, um, is going to be able to just, he's been turning heads here in the A-10s. And uh, going kind of like that national stage, um, it's going to be a pretty serious matchup. He has great hair, too. Yeah. <laughs> He's the best here. Looks like a Super Saiyan. Oh my gosh! Yes, he's powered up, and that's exactly what we need for this LaSalle swimming uh, team. Jake? Actually, all swimming team, the entire team. That's true. Really uh, great hair. Maybe great something hair. in the water, probably. I, I don't. I don't really know. But um, this brings us. Thank you, Jake, for your, your picks of the week. No I, I think those are all reasonably um, chosen picks. I, I think that you'll. I think you're going three and zero this week. Oh, in my opinion. Thank you. Appreciate so it. So you heard it here. My pick of the week for Jake is that Jake goes two or three and zero. So. Um, but next week we have our final episode of the season. Uh, we're we're going to try and make something big out of it. So one of the big storylines in sports globally, uh, at least in recent memory, is concussions. It's a very serious topic. Uh, we don't know much about concussions still, even though we've had years and years of research going. Um, so I'm hoping to maybe bring this topic yeah. locally. Uh, I think it's a very scalable topic. I think it's a very 
scalable issue that we can talk about here on Sportsline and maybe get a conversation going elsewhere because uh, a lot of people think that concussions is just something you run into in terms of you know the primary contact sports like hockey, football, and rugby, but it, it stretches to just about every sport in mm -hmm. some respects. Um, maybe not curling. I don't know about curling, um, but the, the statistics uh, are pretty high. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, I, I figured the just no, no, yeah. I don't, I don't think so at all. I'm gonna completely disagree with the curling. Um, if you would find the research on that and show me that, yes, I would, yeah. I would have to agree. With but you. one of the things that we've kind of even seen with LaSalle and everything, um, even on our men's basketball team, we've been struggling with like these concussions. Oh, absolutely. And um, I know as we were like, looking over these statistics yesterday, it's um, pretty wild just how many concussions that we see and that how the, the, the way that we're reporting them, the way that we're uh, keeping track of them um, is changing and for a very big, like, in a positive way here, um, especially in college sports and in like the, like, the professional world. Yeah, actually uh, the CDC reported that in the past 10 years, the reports of concussions has doubled in 10 years. That's, that's obscene, that's bonkers. Um, but to start this conversation here on Sportsline, I figured it, it would be appropriate to uh, reach out to a past LaSalle TV personality and crewman and former LaSalle baseball player, Mike McLeod. Um, he actually has a long, an arduous history with uh, concussions uh, to the point where he had, to, he had to give up his entire life in athletics. Um, so there's your little tease for next week. I hope you watch it because it's, uh, like I said, let's get the conversation going. This is a very serious issue for not just sports, but um, student and non-student health in general. It's, it's a pretty touchy topic and a lot of athletic associations don't want to talk about it because it spells disaster for some of their programs. But I think we should, we should work to get, get the word out there. So, but that's all we can do for now. So. That sounds really, really interesting. I'm excited. But that just about wraps it up for us this week. If you can't make it out to see the marquee matchup, be sure to tune in next week for our coverage. Keep up with this weekend's other sporting events by visiting GoExplorers.com and by following us on Twitter at SportslineLTV. We post game updates and sneak peeks into the upcoming show. Also check us out on Facebook at Facebook.com slash LaSalleTV. We welcome you to send us your thoughts and suggestions about the show on either website. For Isaac, Nay, and our entire Swordsline team, I'm Anna Gomez. And I'm Brendan Rigney, and this is Jake Smolinski. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you at the game.